Okay, there's one really important thing I got to say, though, as far as implementing this in practice, especially on your assignment, for example. So, uh, and that's this stuff. So for every pixel, what's the probability it'll have some value for every class? Now, this equation is true, mathematically. Um, but if you're going to use it in practice, you're trying to estimate a probability um, based on some training examples, right? And that's just an estimate. And it might be wrong. In fact, it's almost certainly going to be wrong because you just have a statistical sample of the way people write digits. So you don't know the true probability. And if you ignore the fact that you don't have the truth and that you're merely estimating it, you will make large mistakes. For example, uh, and this, this Alan Turing wrote a, uh, 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 was, uh, everyone knows who Alan Turing was, right? Like, you know, the founder of computer science. Um, he had this friend, uh, Ivan Good, I think is, was his name. I know his last name was Good, and his first name began with an I, and his middle name began with a J, so I.J. Good. Um, and Good had this big problem. Uh, he was, he was, it was a statistical problem. This is one reason I love statistics, and I think it's the foundation of philosophy. Um, let's say you live in London and you have a little backyard, as some lucky people have, and you're wondering, um, you know, among all the, the birds in England, you know, how many, uh, what, what's the, what, what percentage of all birds in England are starlings? So I sit and I look out my back window at my little garden and I, every time I see a bird I write down what, what species the bird is. And I look and I've waited for months and I have not seen a single starling. Does that mean that the true fraction of birds in England that are starlings is zero? No, yes. no, <laughs> it doesn't. So, so what, what should I estimate for the probability of a given bird that it's a starling? Not zero, not really high either. Like what should it be? What it, It, this is a super deep question that I'm totally not going to address. Um, but uh, anyway, Good mentioned this problem to Turing when they were working together to break the German Enigma code to stop England from being completely obliterated. And uh, Turing said, oh, just do blah, 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 blah. And after the war, they were able to release the paper, and Good wrote it up. And uh, uh, he wrote the paper, but he says, like, oh, Turing told this to me. So it's called the Good Turing Estimate. Uh, and uh, it's just, uh, just a, another example of how brilliant Turing was, that this thing that Good is known for, is famous for, is this thing that Turing told him in some offhand remark when asked. Um, for your assignment, so, this, so, so this, this is, this, there's this art, it's called uh, smoothing your, your probabilities. You've acquired these very jagged probabilities that are incorrect. They're, they're highly posterized. Have you ever seen a digital image that's been posterized where the the, the um, val lightness values and colors have been reduced to a small discrete set, and it looks like kind of weird and, and bad. It's like an in, in, in inaccurate representation of whatever it was. So you, it's because the data has been quantized. So the same thing, you're going to see a certain number of sevens, and it might happen that in this pixel, the sevens like always had a value of zero there. Does that mean the probability of seeing a one for that pixel, given that it's a 7, it should be 0. If you write 0 in your model, and somebody goes and puts, remember there are like four gray values, and, and you were all got all 0, but so there's like a, there was a speck of dust, and it comes out as a 1, you're going to say, oh, it can't be a 7. A 7 never had a 1 at that pixel, ever. <laughs> And, and you're going to say this probability is zero, and zeros have an incredibly potent effect when you multiply them by other numbers, <laughs> let me tell you. So, so you're going to want to smooth away, smooth off the corners of your histograms that you're making here and, 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 and make your data a little nicer. The method that I recommend is uh, called add one smoothing. So, Start by assuming that you've seen it all. Everything has at least one count. And then go ahead and look at your training data. 
And the more training you data you get, the more your initial adding one to every bin will get washed away in the noise. But it will ensure that the probability of every single thing is mildly positive. That's called add one smoothing. I probably should have a slide on it someday, but it's so simple that it hardly deserves a slide. I, whenever I, I think about startlings in order to remember add one smoothing. I.J. Good and, and Bletchley Park. And so, so the idea is that you pretend you've seen a startling once, and then you see all these other birds. And after you've seen n birds, you're, the, you're estimating the probability of a startling is 1 over n. Actually, 1 over n plus 1. No, that's the beauty of this really simple little model, is you just have to say, given that it's a well, for every, for every uh, digit, of which there are 10, for every pixel, of which there are 200, you have four possible values, and you initialize all those to be one. And you have to pretend that you saw four sevens already. But you don't need to keep track. The beautiful thing is you don't need to keep track of this pixel's relationship to another pixel. You don't, have to see, you don't have to see all possible pixel patterns because you're treating the pixels as independent. You're being incredibly naive to think that the pixels are independent bits of evidence about the sevenness of this image. Because of course they're not independent, for crying out loud. Like we, when we write with a pencil, it tends to, to darken adjacent pixels, in my experience. You don't get like random values all over the piece of paper. There's a certain locality to, to a pen stroke. So, so this is called the sparse data problem. And I suggest uh, fixing it by smoothing your model using uh, plus one smoothing. You may scoff at plus one smoothing, but it's easy and it works. And if you don't do it, you're going to have these pesky zeros that are going to mess you up. Any more questions about naive Bayes classifiers? I want to point out that we've completely subverted the paradigm here. We had been talking about learning as function approximation. And this ain't no function learner, baby. This is called density estimation. We're learning a probability distribution, a mammothly multidimensional probability distribution. So we're, we're, we've, in one fell swoop, we've done an entirely different class of learner. It's still supervised learning. Right? We're given sevens. We're learn building a model of sevenness. Um, in fact, you can, that's one thing that's kind of fun to do, actually, is you can say, um, you know, given that I, I'm guessing a seven, what's the most probable value for this pixel? And you'll get out of your, you'll get, if you, after you've trained your classifier, you can figure out like, what's the most probable seven by saying, you know, I, I, I'm guess, uh, if it's a seven, what's the, what's the most likely value for, for each of the pixels? And then you'll get a, a picture of a seven popping out. That's the canonical seven according to your probability distribution. It is really cool, I think. Like that's what the computer is thinking. Uh, you know, what is it now? It has formed an image in its mind of what sevens are. Um, okay, so this is learning as density estimation. But density estimation is is uh, is estimating. Uh, a probability distribution, right? So if, if uh, 0, 1, 2, 3, right? There's, this is a probability distribution. Right? That's, a, that's a probability distribution. So um, it's also called probability density. Um, so we're doing learning as density estimation. 